Bonjour, mon ami. We are leaving Ontario and we are driving into Quebec. To put things into perspective, Quebec is three times the size of France. It's twice as big as Texas. It's larger than Alaska. And it's predominantly French speaking. I've fired up my Google Translate Live and I've been brushing up on my Francais because we're going to travel every part of this province. We're entering one of the most metropolitan cities in Canada, Montreal. Then we're off to one of the most beautiful and iconic cities that some say is more European than Europe, Quebec City home to Carnaval. There is so much to see in this province and so many places to travel, but can you with an electric truck? Well, we're about to find out because we're going to travel north, south, east and west of this great and amazing province and find out if Quebec is totally trucked up. A new culture in a second what an interesting entry into Quebec. I came over from Hawkesbury, Ontario, and right across the street, over one bridge, I went to Grenville, and instantly everything changed to French. It was kind of cool, actually, and I've already noticed that they went from just kilometer an hour signs, which I've seen across Canada, but here in Quebec, they still put underneath it the mile per hour for visiting Americans, for courtesy. I mean, that's pretty freaking nice. And the signs too, instead of having things like merge, there's a lot less text and more symbols, which is really common in Europe. I'm having to do a bit of a detour. I'm going into Laval rather than directly into Montreal because I had an alarm this morning just to notice. And it said full battery discharge required. And then just an okay button. I mean, what the frick does that mean? How do you fully discharge your battery? Does that mean I have to bring it in for service? But if it has something for service, it always says contact service or something like that. It was just kind of a, okay, like, thanks. So you just gave me more anxiety over what? What, what, is that, what does that mean? I hit, oh, okay. And then everything just looks normal. I'm on the road. I've driven already 12,000 kilometers. I can't afford to be somewhere and have some kind of battery issue. I had to immediately detour to the nearest uh, dealership and they were just as perplexed. They ran a quick diagnostic and no code showed up, nothing, nothing. We'll keep an eye on things and I'll keep you posted if anything else pops up because we need to know everything we can know about EV trucks, both the good, the bad, and the freaking ugly. But because of that and because it was very cold last night, and because I'm not plugged in, and because I was a schmuck and wanted to get all of my editing done last night, I didn't go out and charge my vehicle up somewhere. So I started the day with only 60%, and I took the wrong route to Montreal. I followed Google's map. It put me on the main highway 417, but there's no chargers on 417. <laughs> And if you go down from Cornwall, there's tons of them and they're all fast chargers, which would mean that the most rational way to go. I didn't take the rational way. To get to a fast charger and to not be pushing it to the very limit, I detoured because there is a Nax adapter approved Tesla supercharger in Laval. And I'm just gonna grab a little bit before heading for my truck top stop. No sign of any issues whatsoever after that little notice came up. So we'll just uh, take it one step at a time. I do like this. So we've got six bays, one, two, three, yeah. Oh, actually eight. But then over here, we've got uh, an eco recharge and those are 150 kilowatt as well. A little stop and the baguette. I just had a lovely lunch here at San Genera Cafe. And I love this community around here. All the buildings are brick. Every cafe and restaurant, of course, has an outdoor space. Beautiful densification in the traditional style of, of residences with the winding staircases in suites. And it's all designed for walking and bicycles. Probably every third vehicle here is an electric. And also, this is incredibly popular in Quebec. I think it's an absolutely brilliant idea. Just bicycle rentals. And every street that I'm looking at has a dedicated lane, as you can see. That's a, a, a delivery bicycle. Uh, and these are all lanes everywhere you go uh, for bikes. In fact, bikes and, and pedestrians 
cars uh, are given more right of way than the vehicles. Chevy Blazer EVs and Equinox EVs are very popular, almost as popular it seems as Teslas in Ontario and Quebec. What's really cool is I'm very close to the downtown core and the air is clean. I love the marriage in the new and the old here. You've got buildings that are a few hundred years old, right next to a modern one, but there's some architectural standards that are ensuring that things still look more traditional. Each one of these communities is very vibrant. It encourages you to get out and walk. Every little shop and business I see is full of people. Everyone's out and about walking, bicycling. There's just a movement of people everywhere you look. There's still a lot of traffic, but all the parking that I've found so far has been free. It's encouraging me to stop and get out of my car and it's working in most cases i'd be pretty stressed out about driving around and going to downtown with only 100 kilometers of range but i'm not because when i look at my screen i've got every kind of little fast charger popping up all over the city montreal right now is looking pretty stinking good when you're in stop and go when you live in a city People have obviously figured it out here. Oh my goodness. Over there are public level two chargers on big long pull uh, cables that are strung up and hanging down. I just saw a whole series of them. You could just pull up and level two charge while you're doing whatever you're doing. I'm starting to see street side level twos around the city that are just there. <laughs> Haven't seen that before. Montreal's got them and it obviously shows in what people are driving because as I was just saying stop and go you're making electricity all day long so you can drive quite a large part of your day and not use up your range. If you're driving in a city like this and you're in that city environment most of the time <laughs> every vehicle passing me is electric or hybrid. Why would you have gas? Everyone here is driving only a specific amount of distance and most of them with stop and go are, are able to do it for weeks at a time because they're not going to drain their batteries down and obviously people have made that decision here in Montreal because everyone seems to be buying electric about 50 percent of the taxi cabs that I've seen are electric smart business case what really surprises me is the traffic lights at every one of these traffic lights there's a secondary light for bicycles there's a bicycle stop right now because we're right hand turning this city thought of everything it's just so functional there's a whole series of streets that are closed to, to vehicles and then everyone's so polite this guy just flashes lights to just let someone in electric bike stands everywhere and everyone's renting them it's just a neat concept that is totally taken off here. And it's late October. This is where level twos make sense. If you have to pay for parking downtown Montreal. So if you're shopping, if you're doing business all day, you can plug in and come back out from work with a full vehicle. We've had to detour a little bit to get to the downtown core. I've also been directed to an ultra fast uh, circuit électrique and also one for Electrify Canada. There's several within five to 10 minutes of where I am. It's just popped up on my screen as ultra fast. So we're gonna grab one of those on our way out of the core. There's so much to capture in this city, you know, next to these amazing modern buildings. And then on my other side will be these 200 year old residences and I just can't capture it I'd be here for days finally got a chance to capture this just at a light where we are seeing this uh, everywhere those are the public chargers along the streets and there's downtown city driving for you I left the cafe and I've driven about 23 kilometers and then I got to the downtown core and I've driven about five kilometers around the downtown core and I've gained mileage. I currently have 115 kilometers of range and that's in a three ton truck. Try that in you know, a Model 3 or in a little Kia. I am in a residential parking area and here is the uh, Hydro Quebec, their version of BC Hydro and man is it kicking butt. They're all over the place. Also, you can see over here, Circuit Electrique. You're here for the day. You live in an apartment block here. There's two right here. The parking lot down the street has two. The parking lot down the street from this has four and leave it there, vehicles plugged into level twos. That's pretty freaking great. And then this, well, it says 180 kilowatt max, but that's per side. This thing can pump out at 360 kilowatts. It's actually registered at 360. I'm charging at 152 kilowatts right now. And the rate, <laughs> the, the rate is 28 cents a kilowatt. 
eat that Tesla. That's how it's done. Montreal's absolutely kicking it. Like this is a total win. They don't have a lot of fast chargers downtown, which makes total sense. Unlike some cities in Quebec, they've got it right. They've got these waypoints outside of the cities or just before you get onto major highways or before you get to a major junction. There are the fast chargers and there's a good number of them thought everything through. Oh, and I just noticed there's not two here, there's four. There's another one right there. And there's two electric vehicles, a Bolt and an Audi, currently charging up um, on their local level twos while they're at work or at home. It's easy to move around in this city and in this province so far with an electric vehicle. Best I've seen so far. I'm seeing something in Montreal. The dealerships here, their courtesy cars, what they're showcasing are all electric. There's some responsibility and accountability to be put on dealerships here also in Canada, where they think they're not gonna make enough money. They're doing very little to promote electric vehicles. Whereas here, both in Ontario and in Quebec, they know where the money is. I'm quite surprised at how many ID4s, Equinox, Blazer, Kia, holy smokes, lots of Kia, lots of Hyundai, and not as many Teslas. You notice the Teslas, but when you start adding them all up, the others are selling incredibly well. I think that GM, Chevy's, got themselves a hit with the Equinox and the Blazer. I've heard some pretty poor reviews on them, but the price is right, and for what you pay and what you get, I think people are saying it's, it's the new Bolt. It's as good, if not better. It's way more spa spacious, has more power, has more flexibility than the Bolt does, and I can get it for cheap. And people are buying them. Why aren't they in the rest of Canada? Try finding them on a dealer lot. I mean, look, the BMW Mini, they've got their electrics on the front of the lot showing them off, and every one of these dealerships is covered like a pin cushion with level two and DC fast chargers at their dealerships. You're not seeing that in the West. Look how long I tried to find myself a Silverado EV in British Columbia and Alberta. Out here, there's a lot of them. Funny that. But here's the part of city, Montreal included, that I've never liked. And this is why a bicycle in the city is not a bad idea. Because if you had a bicycle, as long as it's a bicycle highway somewhere around here, you're gonna be moving a lot faster than you will in a car or a truck. And Google's rerouted me about six times thinking it's gonna save me traffic only to put me back into more congestion. AI and Google's great, Google Maps is great. Android Auto is very useful, but it's not perfect. And you're dealing with the human condition and what people do or don't do. And it's not always predictable. I've been moving at about five kilometers an hour maybe. I'm stopped more than I'm moving. Remember all that traffic I just drove through, that massive congestion and it rerouting me? Well, it decided to send me to the wrong Tesla supercharger. It's got a similar name. So basically I have to drive back through the congested mess that I just went through to get to the supercharger, to charge up, to then go to my destination, which means instead of arriving at 5.30, I'm now gonna arrive at 7 p.m. You know the good old days when you just pulled out a freaking map? You looked at it, a lot of times this technology is snot. It's just absolute feces guiding us supposedly to save us time and stress. My blood pressure has gone up tenfold. You just want to throttle somebody. There's a lot to be said for Tesla on stuff like this. Bye bye Tesla superchargers that I can't use. I don't need this kind of stress from an app. One thing that has not changed regardless of whether or not you're driving gas or electric, is traffic. But what's really shocking is when I'm going in and looking at the travel times for rush hour in Montreal, this is normal. So you leave work and you try to get to like Laval, two hours. And this may come as no surprise to so many of my trucked up viewers because many of you are probably familiar with urban centers. For me, it's insanity. We make choices about how and where we live. Some people don't have choices or not as many. I couldn't do this every day. It's not knocking people who do. Hats off to people who work hard and feed their families and wake up every morning and do what they've got to do. I'd find something else to do. 
because this this will kill you this will knock years off your life knocked a year off of mine in a day we have 19 kilometers to go to the tesla charger that we're trying to reach now there's other options but they're even worse when i put them in one of them is only 12 kilometers away but to get to it is an hour 12 kilometer my 19 kilometers it's estimating 33 minutes i could hopscotch faster i could probably jog faster and i am not a jogger would we'll probably cough up chunks of lung tissue and i'd still get there faster it took me one hour and 12 minutes to drive 29 kilometers <laughs> there's a silver lining in every story and one of them is right here and that is what i've now averaged i did 24 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers overall my trip has been 30 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers so 24 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers is absolutely fantastic and that's stop and go traffic which means if you just drove around really slow you, you'd go like 550 maybe 600 kilometers on a charge several aneurysms later we're getting near the end of the day we are coming up on mont tremblant which is a famous ski area and a provincial park. It's quite a beautiful area, but we're at sunset. We're not gonna see much of it. We're here in the Laurentian Mountains, I believe. I believe they're, I don't know if the Laurentians are part of a remnant of the Appalachian Range. Maybe the Laurentians are their own range. It's quite beautiful and they're covered in maples. Gonna catch some sunset, enjoy the silhouettes of the mountains against the sky go check in to our hotel. It's a chilly five degrees out. It's currently 7.30. We've got a beautiful full moon happening over there. And I've come over Mont Tremblant. I'm heading for Mont Laurier. And look at this. This is just on the side of the road. There's a little rest stop. And at the rest stop is 120 kilowatt. You probably can't see it in the dark. And then it's got a couple of 50 kilowatts over here. So you can fast charge up and those for slower vehicles like the Chevy Bolt or the Nissan Leaf or some of the Mitsubishis. Tap and go with my flow card. I'm just gonna charge up before I arrive at my hotel so I can just get up and go in the morning. <laughs> There's nothing out here except for a bathroom and a charger. No gas stations. I woke up in the Mont Laurier to uh, minus two and ice on my windscreen i'd like to say that autumn is fully here it's more like autumn has left the building but we're going to get on the road here we're off to i don't know where we're going to end up in ville marie when we're done we often talk about the chicken and the egg the reason that we're not going to put in all this infrastructure is because nobody wants evs but everywhere that the infrastructure has been put in first the EV adoption has happened faster. Prime example of that is right here in Quebec. There was a surge in investment in electrical infrastructure for EVs, and that followed with a vertical rise in the number of sales. I'm sitting in front of my trucked up stop, Cafe Creme, and in the parking lot where I'm sitting uh, are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 vehicles of those five are electric. This is common everywhere I go in Quebec. So they're switching because they're putting more money back into their bank account or not into a loan payment. They have less maintenance and there's an infrastructure here. Lesson to all the provinces who make the poor excuse that demand is falling. Demand is slowing. That's the argument that's made. Well, here's a counter to that. Ice sales have plummeted. Stellantis could be in the toilet as a company overall, and they're one of the worst for adoption of EVs. This is just bloody impressive. Many parts of BC still have 50 kilowatt fast chargers for BC Hydro. It looks like they're making efforts to upgrade those, but there were many locations that I found, there were strategic points where they were putting in 50 kilowatt brand new. And it had a lot to do with their attitude towards competition, as if they didn't want to compete with a private system. I think that's a poor approach. If you're going to invest in infrastructure and you're thinking of service rather than profit, ignore that. That's their problem. If they can't figure out how to compete, um, then tough crap. It's more important to have the systems there. And BC Hydro is also going to be in a position to make money, just like Tesla Superchargers, which goes back into uh, the province. So I don't have a problem with that. And obviously, Quebec Hydro doesn't have a problem with that either. Here we are in a smaller community, but it's an important area for travel. So instead of putting in 50 kilowatt, they've got two 
180 split kilowatt systems. My truck can only charge maybe sometimes at around 180, barely. So this can do everything my truck can handle. They have 10 ratings on plush air, every one of them. They're never down. Even a little bit of a lesson for BC, which is really shocking because that's the best system I've seen so far. Quebec is so far, so far. We've only just touched the beginning of this province. Here's a lesson for all of us EV truck owners when we're on the road. If you can plug in at your campsite overnight, if you can plug in at your hotel overnight, that's a big bonus because your batteries can't precondition if you don't. So as you know, this morning here, I woke up to ice on my window. And because of that, my batteries were colder. So when I went to plug in here, it wouldn't ramp up faster than 80. And it was because it had to precondition the batteries. And the moment the batteries were warm, I'm now doing uh, 158 kilowatts. Always plug it in overnight, even if it's right up to full. You can do your departure times and your comfort control so you can jump into a vehicle that's nice and warm and toasty and everything's perfect and your windows are defrosted and all those lovely things. So here it is. Definitely seeing it adding 10 minutes to my travel time because the hotel that I stayed at didn't have an overnight EV charger. However, here in Quebec, there's a lot of them, but I'm a cheap bastard and uh, I can't afford a lot of these hotels. That went smoothly. I sure like having fast chargers everywhere. I could get used to that in a hurry. So even with me having to precondition my batteries in the slow ramp up, 18 minutes and I'm at 80%. I've got 328 kilometers of range and off I go. And it cost me uh, $12. <laughs> I love not having to use Tesla superchargers, and that's because they're insanely expensive compared to Hydro Quebec, compared to Circle Electric, and compared to Circle K, and they're insanely expensive compared to just about everybody. So they've got themselves a little bit of competition here in Quebec, and I like competition because it brings prices down. A few moments of whining. Ford Navigation loves to cut things close. It's not giving the cushions, and you need the cushions, especially, you know, it's calculating terrain and temperature, but I'm always seeing, in most cases, slight losses from the calculation, so that adds to anxiety. Ford needs to eliminate that anxiety. So add five minutes to your charge time. Add, you know, an extra stop for 10 minutes. I just charged up and it instantly said, you've got enough to get to Val d'Or. Well, that's great. Arriving with 27 kilometers of range and all my alarm bells going off. But there's a charger up the road, 35 kilometers, that's also 180 kilowatt per side, four units right and it had me scheduled to stop there because it said i didn't quite have enough range but because the charger i was at ramped up so quickly and i was out of there in 18 minutes it looks at this and goes it's just you know a dumb program that says okay you've got enough bye i am most certainly going to charge up at 31 kilometers but it eliminated it without me giving it permission to do so. I added that charger in my planning because it says you didn't have enough, so I chose it. The moment I started driving, it eliminated it because it decided that I could get there. But then to go back and find that charger again means I gotta go back into the freaking menu and find it, but it's too far away for the system to pick it up, which means I have to pull off the side of the road. Nah! I'm fine, really, I'm good. And to further make my case, going up hills, and a sign I just passed said Val d'Or. My next stop, or Val d'Or, is 273 kilometers away. And now my range total is reading 271. That's the kind of stress we don't need, Ford. Here are your two gas stations available over the next 150 kilometers. This one, for sale and out of business. Uh-oh, next one, out of business. Noticing a trend. The highway to Val d'Or is epic. I thought Northern Manitoba was gorgeous and Northern Ontario, wow, I'd love to explore this area. Camping sites all over the place, not cabins and lodges and that type of feel that we saw as we went up Northern Manitoba. Very different if you haven't seen that video. 
Check it out right here. We're here in Valdor. I'm not quite sure how many people it has in it, but it's got a crap pile of chargers. But I thought I'd try something new today. We're at the uh, Hardy Ringet Ford Lincoln dealership. There's tons of Lightnings on the lot. And unlike so many dealerships where you have all the F-350s and heavy duties lined up at the front, like you'd see in Alberta and Saskatchewan. Here up at the front are all their electric vehicles and their Mavericks all lined up. Obviously, those are the vehicles people are wanting to buy. We've got four units, but eight chargers, all independent, so you can run each one at 200 kilowatt, which is pretty awesome. Their charge point, there's some goods and bads here. Bad is, it's not much cheaper than Tesla. Uh, they do still do by the hour i'm not going to be here an hour so i'm still not hitting like the 60 70 bucks to fill up that i was hitting with with tesla but there's some neat things about charge point here in canada that i wanted to share now bear with me because the screen's going to be in french okay so we're seeing uh coot over the side that's our price tem c'est cool that is our time that we've been here and then down the bottom energy it's pretty easy to kind of figure out what's actually being said that's how much energy we've drawn but what i like as well is it gives you all kinds of information it's telling us over here there's what we're speed is our speed is at 125 and it's been warming up as as we go along so it's been hovering in that area but it came up from 100 so i think it's going to keep going higher but this is nice with these machines it's telling me that it's currently drawing at 350 amps so my system's a 400 amp system but it's telling me what's going on and even here, the volts. So 357 volt draw. So there's a lot of information with these charge point machines, which I really like. I also like the fact that it is um, abundant, the number of chargers here. The population of Valdur and surrounding area is 33,000 people. There are three high-speed fast chargers in Valdur directly. All of them have multiple chargers. In the district, there are eight, all over 100 kilowatts. There are others, your level twos, and uh, 50 kilowatts. Let's just put that into perspective. We had about double that number in Winnipeg with a population of three quarters of a million. Everyone, of course, is charging at home, but within 50 to 100 kilometers, in any direction to any other community, you're going to find chargers. I haven't seen any Tesla superchargers out of Montreal and your main highway, uh, which is kind of typical in Canada of Tesla. There's a lot of number of units, but it gets really sparse if they can't make the big volumes and make the big money. So up here, I guess they've decided they can't. But it's nice to see ChargePoint here with the Ford Lincoln dealership. Oh, it just keeps getting better. Take a look at this. This is showing my charging curve. It's showing how I ramped up and then where I'm sitting at and how it's slowly gaining here over the period of time on the top. So it's showing my time of charge. I know it's very difficult to see. Here it is. And you can see my charging curve, how that's occurring. Now you can see the maximum that it could get to and where it's averaging for my truck. That's pretty good. Liking that. I've put in, as you can see, 78 kilowatt hours. Even on a minute to minute basis, that's like half of what I was paying with the superchargers. Out in these farmer fields in well, definitely northern Quebec, most would consider this very northern Quebec, and I'm looking at all these farmhouses, there's a Chevy Bolt driving down the road, and, and every one of these farmhouses has electric vehicles parked in their driveway, and I can see where they plugged in in their carport, or they plugged in, you know, on the side of the house. These people have level two chargers on their farms and on top of that a lot of these farmhouses have solar panels on the south side of their house because it's open and they're getting tons of free electricity so they're driving for, for free my dream i haven't seen anything like this in any other part of canada we have something to learn out in the west about what's going on in quebec nicely done senior memory interlude okay this is almost freaky I pulled in, I'm charging at 180 kilowatt, again, brilliant, in this town. And the name of the town is called Notre Dame du Nord, which means Our Lady of the North. When I was a little boy, I went to school and was raised in a little French enclave, was in Moranville in Alberta. On Main Street in Moranville was this, was this church. 
almost identical to the church three doors down from my brick home that was built to house the RCMP in the 1930s. The church was built in 1890 or 1891. And the sad thing is the church that I looked at every day as a boy burned to the ground a few years back. Moranville lost the whole church and I can't believe what I'm seeing here. It's a spinning image. That is just amazing. Especially when I went to school at Notre Dame. And Notre Dame de Nord is on the shores of this amazing lake. One that I'm going to have a little spot next to this evening. Not a bad view from the inn. That was an interesting morning. I've made the assumption, or others coming to my trucked up stops in Quebec have actually made the assumption that of course I'd be able to speak French. <laughs> Thank goodness for Google Translate Live. But what I want to know is how I can change the voice so I don't sound like a sultry woman. I keep screwing up this one. Maybe some people who speak French can help me because I've said some interesting things about massaging people and I'm not wanting to massage anyone or something about touching my head lightly. And I know Ted is head. So I don't know how what I'm saying sounds like head. But anyway, I'm just trying to order my cup of coffee. So I say, un lait d'avant, de caffeine lat s'il vous plaît. I don't understand how that becomes someone's massaging my head. It seems to be happening a lot. My truck top stops could continue to be very interesting. All the grass tips are covered in hoarfrost. I don't think I'm going to make it back from this trip without running into snow. The common question that comes up is how far am I averaging while I'm driving between charges? And I would estimate in miles, because a lot of them have been American uh, trucked up folk asking me, it's around 200 miles. So you're most certainly stopping more than if you were driving a gas vehicle with this particular truck. If you were doing something like what I'm doing on a regular basis, I think the Silverado EV would make more sense. You can tow farther, you can drive farther. So if you're not towing, you can drive almost as far as you can with a gas truck. And as you know, I went through a process of deciding which vehicle I was gonna get, and you can watch that video right here. We are in the community of Tamis Gaming. I'm definitely pronouncing that wrong. It's Tamis Gaming, Tamis Gaming, Tamis Gaming. <laughs> uh, you can just absolutely roast me in the comments. I'm good, I deserve it. The charging units are charge point. The app that you use is charge point. This is done through, pardon the light, uh, Richage Eco, um, and it's part of the Eco IGA funds. Uh, through Earth Day and it's something that IGA grocers do and I see these all over um, IGA networks throughout Quebec. The vendor pays ChargePoint I think for the install. It is partially funded through some government incentives as well. Um, then they put them on site and then they, the vendor charges a spread between whatever the hydro rate is and what they charge the customer. So I think that's how it works here in Canada. Either way, I'm very grateful. These are 125 kilowatts. They're only charging around 75 kilowatts but I don't need a lot. And they also have a Quebec Hydro here in the same community, 50 kilowatts. So of course I'm gonna cho choose these. Now to be fair, I'm technically on the Ontario side right now. That sign right there is for welcoming me to Ontario. And on the other side of this dam, it's welcoming me to Quebec. We're gonna be popping in and out between Quebec and Ontario as we make our way down uh, this uh, river system. I actually can't remember which one this is, but this actually drains into the St. Lawrence Seaway, goes all the way down to Gatineau and then across and drains into the St. Lawrence. So this is a major dam project. We've got one on this side and one over on the other side. And then that, when I drove into Tamas Gaming, uh, I was almost knocked off my feet from the stench. Just this horrible smell. No one seems to notice, of course, because they live here. Uh, pulp and paper mill and oh yeah very different from what I see in British Columbia because there's all kinds of controls on the pulp and paper plants there's scrubbers there's all kinds of things that are required to control the amount of smell smoke and uh, effluent that comes out obviously on the Quebec side 
not doing the same. Anyway, I'm gonna try to get some fresh air by getting the heck out of here. What a dipshit I am. It's the Ottawa River. Of course it's the Ottawa River. It goes to Ottawa. <laughs> anyway, there is pulp and paper mills and all kinds of commercial operations all the way down the Ottawa River after those dams. And then next to it, it's got this adventure sightseeing uh, site and a canoe rental. I can think of better spots. We are now doglegging back into Quebec onto the 533. This goes down to North Bay, Ontario. And now we're swinging back into Matawa. And Matawa, I believe, is one of those municipalities that sits right on the border between the two provinces. So I mean, I'm not mistaken, half the towns in Quebec and half the towns in Ontario. So I can't wait to see that. We're heading back along the edge of the Ottawa River. We're just gonna be on the west side. My brain is scrambled. You try it, just try driving uh, 15,000 kilometers or 10,000 freaking miles and see what happens to your brain. And you wanna know who keeps me company? Me! <laughs> I've had some good arguments with myself. You know, I think that might be in Birch. No, that's an Aspen. Birch, Aspen, Birch. The bad sign, no it isn't. Did I ask for your opinion? <laughs> Don't have to, you just always give yours whenever you think it's okay. Yeah, whatever. Well, 533 South is definitely a secondary road or secondary highway. I think I'm gonna lean on the side of road. When you're in an electric truck, roads like this, they're fun. The handling in this thing, the cornering in this thing. I mean, I'm driving a three ton block of metal. You wouldn't know it. It keeps tight in the corners. It doesn't sway out. I am just impressed by how this thing handles and it hugs the road. Woohoo! Baby. My three ton Porsche. I've been on the road since September 18th, even though my butt's sore and I really need to go for a hike. I gotta move my body. I haven't moved my body the way I typically move my body, so I'm starting to swell up like a freaking pumpkin. I'm in the season, just paint me orange. I'm totally still loving it. Actually, I believe most of Matawa, according to the map, is inside Ontario and not Quebec. There are more than enough chargers here in Matawa. If you're coming across from Ontario, using the Trans Canada, you've got lots of spots here as well. 2,500 people in this town. Oh, it's beautiful. There's only one thing that we must discover about Matawa, and whether or not this community is really worthy of a visit. Better have a cafe. If it doesn't have a cafe, I mean, what good is it? I can sniff them out. Hey Google, find me a cafe in Matawa, Ontario. Got it, the Moon Cafe. Moon Cafe and it's temporarily closed? The only cafe in town and it's closed? Well, that's it, I'm never coming here again. They obviously just, they're not interested in tourism. Let's take a chance. They say it's temporarily closed, but maybe it's not been updated. Cause the only other option after that is Tim Hortons. And as far as I'm concerned, that's not a latte. That's, that's something else. For all you Timmy people, you're cursing me right now and you have every right to. It's an iconic part of this nation. Tim Hortons, hockey, coffee, but you know that Tim Hortons was bought out and is now owned by an American company, right? Okay, calm down, put down the knife. Enjoy your Timmy's, they're wonderful. Oh, I'm getting sponsored from them. They turned it into a cannabis shop, Bud Smoke. Gets us another way to get pepped up in the morning. Well, that's it, Matawa? You got a one out of five star rating for Simon's uh, Coffee Stop Tour Travel Guide. We just drove by a bunch of teepees. I thought that out in northeastern Canada and the United States, it was wigwams. This is coming, of course, from a white colonialist uh, fat old guy who doesn't know shit. Uh, so I'm probably not the right person to uh, check in on on this one, but I did go and ask white colonialists created Google and see what they had to say. And here's what they said. Wigwams are more semi-permanent structures, kind of like a yurt. And teepees, being a triangular cone structure, were more temporary for traveling great distances and being able to take down your home and put it up. Basically the concept of a tent, just actually better. And utilized by more of the Plains uh, First Nations. That explains a lot. It's probably wrong. A time wasting detour. And I know what you're saying. You say, Simon, hold on a second. We're supposed to be in Quebec. You already did the Ontario video. Why are we back in Ontario? Well, to get from Ville Marie, 
back south or to get to Quebec City, there's no cross-country way of doing that. There's one road that comes down, which we're now on, which becomes part of the Trans-Canada Highway, and that's Ontario 17, or we go back the way we came. So we're taking a different road, never taking the same way twice, but there's this vast expanse where there's no real road. We just turned off of 17 Ontario because I could go all the way down to Ottawa Gatineau on the Ontario side, but we're all about Quebec here. So we're gonna take another way in. It's only five or 10 minutes longer for the next uh, 105, 110 kilometers, so around 65 miles. And we are pulling now into Chinot, eight kilometers ahead, province of Quebec. We're just passing the sign here. The day-to-day -day life for most Quebecois is in French. And they don't have to do anything for me. I mean, I look at where I'm living and how few people do what individuals here do for me speaking English, but not the reverse happening in Alberta or BC where I grew up and I've lived most of my life. A lot of people are bilingual, but not a huge number, and there's not an effort made. The effort is always made by those coming from Quebec to speak English. But here, the effort should be the other way around. I should be the one making the effort to speak French. And there's this attitude that, well, yeah, okay, well, just learn English if you come out here. But those same people, if they traveled here, they'd be hoping <laughs> that these individuals living here would speak English for them. So they don't turn it on its head. And I've turned it on its head here. But it's funny how my elementary school teaching is popping back into my head. It's very little because I was in grade five when they tried to put me in French immersion because I was doing well in French class and I was being taught by French nuns. I'm actually able to read more than I thought I'd be able to read. My accent, like the pronunciation and what's silent and what's carried and intonation, oh, I'm butchering it. But I've had nothing but positive experience and individuals really trying to help me along. Not, you know, even when in certain parts of uh, Quebec already, I've ran into areas where no one's speaking English. So it's up to me to figure out the French. And they've worked so hard to guide me along and try to help me out and throwing in little tidbits of English words whenever they know what. My last stop of the day here at Holiday Inn Express in Gatineau, Quebec. And this is very nice. At most of the hotels in Ontario and Quebec, you're gonna find these. They've got a spot over here for a Tesla. And then they've got these, Nudo. Now they do charge. This one does charge a little bit of money, but it's not by minute, thank goodness. It's by kilowatt hour. And it's 28 cents a kilowatt hour. So I can leave this overnight. I'll be to 100% and probably spend 15 bucks. So it's a really inexpensive way to travel. So I'll wake up in the morning to head for Quebec City. Good morning, we've got a 500 kilometer or 310 mile drive ahead of us, but it's all open, it's all highway, it's on the Trans-Canada, is the best way to get there. We're cruising along the St. Lawrence Seaway. One dental emergency later. And I'm looking a little like Hillbilly Bob this morning. I broke a tooth out last night, like the whole tooth, but it's not like I can get anything done with it until I get back. I'm gonna be eating a lot more porridge for a little while. It's a good morning, and you wanna know why it's a good morning? Because I woke up in Gatineau, and I went to Mocha Loca Cafe, and they understood what I said. And I got a decaf oatmeal latte, extra shot, but it's a half-calf. I was thrilled about it because I drove 400 and some odd miles, 600 and some kilometers yesterday, from ville marie to Gatineau, most of it in Quebec, they're more French than France. Café au lait. The home to good coffee. All I could find was French fry stands and Tim Hortons. It's not coffee. Because I was enjoying this so much, I was engrossed in euphoria and uh, gastronomic orgasmic uh, sensations that I just punched in, you know, hey Google, take me to, oh, don't, do it. don't do it again. See, you gotta watch what you say with her. Take me to Quebec, okay, go. It put me back on the 417 all the way to Montreal. I can't cut across now because I got a body of water between me and the road I really want it to be on. I want it to be over there for a reason. 
because that's where all the discoveries are made. That's where all the cool little enclaves are. And we could go find things out together on this trip. And that's the best part. When I did that the other day, I didn't want to take the, four, the uh, 17 all the way back on the Ontario-Quebec border all the way to Gatineau. As soon as I got a chance to hop across and get back into Quebec, I did. I found this lovely little community called Portage de Fort, which I mean, I think means the Fort of the Portage. Uh, that'd be my guess. It was beautiful. And I wouldn't have found it if I would have just stayed on a big fat highway. And this highway, this is the most boring highway. This is why I'm tolerating Blue Cruise. Because it's just... The moment we get to Montreal, we're gonna figure out some way not to do this and get to Quebec City our way. Hell with all these mapping software things about convenience and best use of energy and fastest. I don't care about fast. All these other people care about fast. I know, because they've cut me off and given me a finger because I'm not going fast enough. I'm getting used to not having a tooth here. It's really weird and having a hole in my face. And now I say, my F's. I can't say F's because the air leaks on it. <laughs> I'm falling apart. I'm an old man. I'm fine. Young until dead. That's my motto. It's also a t-shirt you can check out below. Yeah, that's a plug. I've had an interesting day in that nothing's really happened at all. Other than after coming off of all the Hydro-Quebec systems, both Google and Ford Navigation, <laughs> stick some gum in it directed me to a Tesla supercharger and supposedly there were recharge there as well and Cirque Electrique like a whole setup at a Canadian tire so I drive 200 and some odd kilometers to it and you know and I've only got about 150 200 kilometers of range so I can't quite make it to Quebec City because it's a really long trip I get there and the whole parking lots blockaded off and I can see all the charges over there and it was at a Canadian tire that's not built yet all of those things meant that I have no charger. Right in the town, just a couple uh, blocks down, were a couple of Circa Electric 50 kilowatt chargers. Oh, okay, well, it's gonna be a little bit longer, but I've got nothing on the agenda today. So I went there and I plugged in and everything was tickety-boo and fine, and free. <laughs> I don't know why, but they, there was no charge. We are standing on a bluff above the St. Lawrence Seaway on the Plains of Abraham. We're gonna head up to the Citadel. An important battle was fought here that decided, basically determined this country. It was a beautiful defensive position at the height of the entire city. Eventually, General Wolfe took it and led to the end of the Seven Year War with France. The French made several attempts to get the city back, but they failed. And eventually it led to the Treaty of Paris and the end of the war and France forfeiting the lands of North America to the British, all leading to the formation of Canada. So this was a decisive battle. Quebec City is no slouch. There's a lot of industry here in the harbor. So it brings in not just tourism, it's an incredibly productive city. And there is the most photographed hotel in the world, the Chateau Frontenac. Quebec City is an incredibly difficult place not to fall in love with. It's sunny, it's balmy, it's beautiful. There's a nice breeze coming off of the St. Lawrence Seaway. You're surrounded by architecture, history, culture, beauty. I mean, what's not the love? It's funny that this channel is all about electric trucks and the electrification of transportation and this whole trip is all about embracing the future. And here in Quebec, what I found, celebration of the past and a marriage with the future. I haven't seen better infrastructure so far and a celebration of the past all in one place. It's pretty damn cool. PC Anglophone moment. Oh sure, here in Quebec. We went up through the Laurentians and that was fine. And then we got to Val d'Or and that was fine. And then we drove all the way down to Ville Marie and that was fine. Then we went all the way down to the Ontario border, all the way back into Gatineau. And then that was all fine. And then we went to Montreal and that was great. And now we're here in Quebec and it's fantastic. But you know what? We're not letting Quebec off the hook just yet. They think they're doing everything better than everywhere else. Well, we're going to find out 
because we haven't driven the Gas Bay. We're going to go up the Gas Bay Peninsula. We're going to drive all the way along the St. Lawrence Seaway right up to the end of Quebec's tip where you can basically drop off into the ocean and swim to Newfoundland. And then we'll see how great they are, eh? Eh? Something could go wrong. It's quite beautiful here. I'm driving along the St. Lawrence Seaway and every now and then along the highway the forest on the side of the road opens and I get this vista and I'm looking off to the Laurentians and the seaway and, and rolling down to it is farmlands. It's difficult to capture on the highway. It's pretty epic. We're doing really well as far as range now. I'm averaging around most of Quebec 430. Now I'm up to 450. I'm back on the highway <laughs> so that's going to diminish. But we'll see how we do. It's nice to be back in that 450 range. I haven't found a single moment here in Quebec where a charger's been down. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't think about that until this very moment. The whole network's up and running. But having extra range just means I can go much further without having to stop. In fact, our next stop is in 74 kilometers. And the stop after that's about 200, 250 kilometers. And I've still got 350 kilometers of range, so I can actually forego my next charge stop. But I'm an old fart, and I gotta pee. A musical intermission. I need to urinate, I need to urinate. I really, really, really need to pee. I need to urinate, I need to urinate. I gotta do it really soon, you see. Or I'm gonna have a wet seat, it won't be a nice drive if I'm covered in my own pee. I need to urinate, I need to urinate. I surely need to freaking pee. You might not be able to see them, but you should be able to hear them. Thousands and thousands. They just keep coming. Unbelievable. And this has been all day. It's a good thing to see. There are a lot of churches in Quebec. A lot of them. I've been misdirected into this little community. Google decided that I should visit the town first before going to the Tesla supercharger, which just so happens to not be in the town. It's 14 kilometers back on the highway. But coming into the town, I discovered that there's a bunch of 100 kilowatt circuit electric and I barely need any electricity and I can now uh, do my ablutions and maybe even find a little cafe right here in this beautiful little community. And I'm gonna go down to the St. Lawrence Seaway and look across to the other side of the, from the Gas Bay Peninsula to the mainland on the other side of Quebec. I love detours. What's really funny is Google was trying to direct me to the 150 Tesla superchargers back on the highway, 14 kilometers back on the route that I came from. Here I am at a whole row of Tesla superchargers perfectly located on my way up to Gas Bay. There's, there's, I don't know how many of the damn things, 14 or something goofy. But then what's really cool is if you're not able to hook up to a Tesla, which a lot of EVs, especially EV trucks, are not able to do yet. Don't worry here in Quebec, because right over there, look at that, we've got one, two, three, four, uh, 100 kilowatts, and they're two per side, so that means there's eight, and then they've got two 180s, and they're 360 units, so they can charge 180 kilowatts per side, and there's two of those. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve chargers over there with Cirque Electric, which is fantastic. And I'm so glad that I detoured into that village. Um, they have a cafe, but it's kind of a different kind of cafe. So I think it was like a cheese cafe. <laughs> I have discovered one thing in Quebec. As you can see on the sign over here, Le Fromageux. Uh, everywhere you go, no matter what you eat, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, it, it's got cheese on it. So I thought that being <laughs> that I'm not supposed to eat cheese, which is a sin, by the way. Everyone should be allowed to eat cheese. I thought that the biggest phrase that I would use in Quebec would be, je n'ai pas le pas français. 
but it turns out that the number one phrase that I've used in Quebec is sans fromage, s'il vous plaît. Uh, no cheese, thanks. Le fromager restaurant poutine. If you come to Quebec, you have to eat poutine. Okay? It's just the way it is. Just get used to it. Okay? Just accept it. It's a pile of fries with a pile of cheese curd, squeaky cheese, uh, with piles of gravy on top. It's poutine. Get used to it. Call your doctor now. Give them a warning that when you're back, you'll need a checkup. As we make our way up the Gaspé Peninsula, the, the seaway is widening as it enters the ocean. And now the northern side is going up to Newfoundland and Labrador. We're quite a distance from it now. In fact, we're getting to the point where it's opening up and it's open sea. What's really amazing is looking at a map, you can see that there's a charging infrastructure that runs right from Quebec City all the way to that ferry in Labrador. There's also, it's dicey, and it's the tough one, but I'd love to do it, and that's to get to Goose Bay, Labrador. And that is one heck of a crazy ride up. There's a large portion of the road that's not paved. You realize how much of a distance it is to get to that point. That'd be quite an adventure. But you can do it in an electric vehicle. Barely, but you can do it. So places out here, they got it worked out. And on that note, I think you already know what I'm gonna call here. I can drive any part of Quebec. The two most northern areas that I didn't drive, you could just drive them. The, the, the chargers are all lined up and they're all reliable. They're all plug share rated like nine or higher. Quebec not only gets the trucked up stamp of approval, Quebec may topple BC as the top spot. I've really got to think about this one because of course I'm from British Columbia and it's, it's, it's close to my heart how well BC has, has turned things around and doing things in, in, in the right manner. But Quebec, I can't think of anything they're doing wrong. And come and experience this province and its history and its culture and its language. Bring a dictionary. Make sure you load up Google Translate Live because this place speaks French. And come and enjoy it and you won't have to worry. You can get through this province even pulling a trailer. You're going to be able to do it. I am sad to say, bon voyage, au revoir, bonsoir to Quebec. It's been a total treat. My EV truck is overkill here, but I've got no problem driving one here. This is an amazing example of how an electric highway really works and how it's not even thought about anymore by the locals. There's no novelty to it. They just go to work. They just go home. They just go see their friends and family. It's doing what they did with their vehicles before when they were internal combustion. But when you have a network like this, you don't have to wait very long because you always know there's just another one 100 kilometers away or less. I want to really thank you for helping me on this journey. I, I feel so much support coming through all the comments and the likes and the enthusiasm for an adventure like this. It's nothing great or epic, but combined, it is. We have just topped 14,500 kilometers since we left in BC. And when we're done here in Quebec, we're at 3,300 kilometers. I could have easily done five or 6,000 stayed here, but I'm on a, a very tight schedule now to get back home before the snows. Together, we've driven through BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, and Quebec, six provinces with four to go. We're about to enter number seven. I'm so glad that you've come along to celebrate my country, to celebrate all the amazing things about it and where the challenges are. I can't wait for the Maritimes. So stick around, stay tuned, click that like, subscribe, and bell notification icon because they're coming up soon. And there's a lot more where that came from because there's some stops that have already happened and already prepared just for you. And they're exciting little stories to tell. And I'm gonna keep right on telling them if you keep right on watching. I'd like to say again, as always, thanks for watching.